Hello everyone and welcome back for part two of my journal dress for the blouse and the apron. So the apron in this pattern was very plain and simple but after looking at other examples of journal dresses and the different types of aprons I can do I decided to kind of spruce mine up a little bit and added my own decoration to it. So I will show you how I did all that today. And then the blouse, I decided to use a different Berta pattern because the one in the Berta 7057 was just a little too plain for what I wanted. So I went and found a more classic style is what it's called on their website. So it was definitely a little more interesting with the patterns on their website that I print out as a PDF compared to the pattern that you can buy at the store. And even though I'm usually on the more modest side, this top is a little more revealing, but just enough for me, I think. So for the contrasting fabric on my apron, I'm using the same fabric I used for my bodice to help tie everything in together. So the apron, once again, is the Berta 7057, and then the blouse is the Durndulge Cropped Blouse 09-2016, number 130C, and I'll have that linked below. I was excited to use more of the decorative terms today that are double-sided, so it's so easy to get very creative with this. I will be using the size 16 in the Berta 7057, and here are the measurements for this pattern. And I will be doing view E for the shorter skirt. I'm short, I'm 5'4", so the shorter skirt hit me perfectly at the knee. So keep that in mind when you pick your size as well. And then the online Berta pattern, it comes with A, B, and C, so I'm just using view C at a size 42. And you can see your size chart online. Go ahead and cut out all your pattern pieces for the apron and your blouse. A side note for A on the blouse, I would add 2.5 inches more to the length and I will explain more later. If you're using a cotton fabric, the 42 inch length is automatically there. So you're just cutting a five inch strip and a 1.5 inch strip for your contrasting trim. So starting with our five inch of my first contrasting fabric, I'm going to fold up each side 3 8 inches and iron this down all the way across. And then going to the 1.5 inch blue strip, I'm going to fold over each edge 1 4 inches all the way across on both sides. Grab your apron piece, and I'm just gonna lay out my two pieces how I want them to lay, so I can get an idea of where the placement will be. Once I was happy, I measured it, and I'll start the top edge at eight inches. So I'm gonna mark eight inches from the bottom all the way across. Then I'll take my five inch strip and I'm gonna lay that top edge along that eight inch line that I marked. I'm gonna sew each side of the strip down at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. I wanna add a trim to my blue strip first since the edge will be hidden underneath. So I'm just gonna take my trim and it's gonna line up on one side, but I wanna sew it on looking something like this. I will sew this trim to my strip at a 1 8 inch seam allowance all the way across. So I'm just going to line this up as I go, making sure the trim is lined up perfectly with my strip. And then I'm going to line up the top edge of my blue strip right underneath the last one. I'm going to sew both sides down at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Next I'll grab my largest double sided trim. I'm going to place the middle of my trim along the top edge of 
my top strip. And then my smaller double sided trim, I'm going to lay the middle right in the center of both strips. I will sew these down close to the edge on both sides. So all the decorative trim is done. Going to the side, I'm going to trim off all the excess fabric and trims. And I'm going to fold the edge over 3 8 inches and iron it down. And then I'll fold it over again another 3 8 inches. Do this on the other side as well. Iron this down at a 3 8 inch seam allowance or just before the edge. At the bottom of the apron, I'm going to fold it up 3 8 inches and iron it down. I'm going to sew this at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And then I'll fold it up again at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And I will sew that edge at a 5 8 inch seam allowance or just before the edge as well. Going to the top of the apron, I'm going to add a gathering base stitch. So with a 3 or 4 inch tail of thread, I will start sewing at a 1 8 inch seam allowance, leaving a tail at the end as well. And then the same thing at a 3 8 inch seam allowance with my tails of thread at the beginning and end. Using my waistband as a guide, I'm going to start gathering the top of my apron, pulling on the top two threads, and I want to gather it to match up to the length between the two small dots on the waistband. Once I have the size that I need, I'm going to tie off the threads on both ends to keep the gathers from coming out. And then I will move the gathers around to distribute them evenly. With right sides together, I'm going to pin the waistband to the top of the apron. And I will sew these together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron the seam toward the waistband. On the other end of the waistband, I'm going to fold it down and iron it at 5 8 inches all the way across. Moving on to the tie bands, I'm going to fold up both the long sides at 1 4 inches and iron it down. And then I'll fold it over another 1 4 inches on both sides. On the long short end, I'm going to fold the edge over 1 4 inches twice like I just did. But on that top corner that sticks out, you have to trim off some of the fabric. And then I kind of try and tuck it in a little bit. So you don't have that point sticking out. You want it tucked nice and neat inside. So I kind of just played with it until it folded over nice and neat. Sew these sides down at a 1 4 inch seam allowance or just before the edge. Going to the shorter short end, we're going to make our plea. So going from the top side of the tie band, you're going to take that mark and fold it over to match the other mark. And only on the top side of the tie band, you're going to fold it back. So the edge should match up with the fold. And then I'm going to iron this so it stays in place and pin it together. Do the same thing to the other one, making sure that your tie bands are opposite. The top is going to be the side with the longest length. Mm -hmm. 
Sew these sides at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Going back to our waistband, take your tie band, the side with the folded fabric is on top. So face your waistband and tie band right sides together so you can see that the hemmed edge side is going to match up with the bottom of the waistband near the gathers. Match up the raw edges. You're gonna fold the waistband in half. So all three edges should meet at the bottom. Pin this in place and do the same thing to the other side. Sew these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance, making sure to get right up against the edge of the apron. Trim off half of the seam allowance and a little off the corners. Turn your waistband right side out. Line up the open edge at the gathered seam allowance and iron the waistband in place. Pin this together and then do a slip stitch or ladder stitch all the way across. Just keep in mind that tying your apron a certain way does mean something. So here's a guide on which way to do yours. Moving on to our blouse. I've printed, taped together, and cut out my four pattern pieces. And I'm gonna lay them out on some tracing paper. This pattern doesn't come with the seam allowance, so we're gonna add a 5 8 inch seam allowance all around each piece. So you can see here I've already started one and I will give you an example of how to go around the curves. So I'm just gonna take my ruler and a see-through one is best, and I'm gonna line up the edge of my pattern at the 5 8 inch mark. Whatever part of the pattern lines up with the line perfectly, that's the line I'm gonna draw at the edge of my ruler. So I'm gonna move it again, lining it up on another little piece, and I will draw a line at that same section. So on big curves like this, you want to do little marks at a time, lining it up and then marking only the length that's lined up. And here's an example of an even bigger curve and you want to do the same thing. You'll just probably have to make smaller marks, but you can see that it's just as easy to make the curve. Once all your pieces are cut out, I'm going to serge or zigzag stitch all the edges except the armhole sides. Grab your two front pieces and then add your front facing to both of the necklines. Pin these together and sew these on at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Make a clip into the corner, making sure not to cut past the thread. Open up these pieces and iron the seams toward the front bodice. Then fold over the facing as well, lining it up nice and neat, and press this down as well. Pin the facing to the lining again, and we're going to top stitch at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Lay these two pieces right sides together, and pin the center front. Sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron the seam open. Now 
Then from the center front, you're gonna sew a generous 1 4 inch seam allowance on both sides. So it should look like this. Grab your drawstring bands and fold them in half lengthwise, pinning it together. Sew these at a 1 4 inch seam allowance. Grab a sewing needle with a little bit of thread, tying a knot at the end, and then going to one end of the drawstring, sew through the center about three to four times. Turn your needle around and you wanna insert the eye of the needle into the tube. Thread it through all the way across to the other end. From here, you're gonna start pulling on your needle and it might take a little effort and a few minutes, but the idea is to get the end that you tied to go into the center of the drawstring. That way we can turn this right side out. So it does take a little bit, just play with it. I have some tweezers that I kind of use to help fold the edges inward, but eventually it'll go through and just pull your needle till your drawstring is right side out. I'm going to clip off a little bit of the ends to get rid of all the fraying and then I'm going to lay these out neatly and press them in place. Grab some safety pins and add one to one of the ends of the drawstring and then we're going to use the safety pin to thread the drawstring through the channel of our bodice. So just place it inside and then slowly move it through till it comes out the other end. Do the same thing to the other drawstring on the other side. Line up the edges of the drawstring with the edge of the bottom of the bodice. Sew these down at a 1 4 inch seam allowance. Taking the bias facing strip, we're gonna fold this in half lengthwise and iron it down. Now this it was a little tricky for me. I have no idea how I was originally supposed to do this. The pattern makes it sound like you're supposed to line it up with the edge of the neckline, but once it was sewn on and I folded it up, the shoulder seams weren't matching up. But I have no idea, after about two hours of frustration, I just made it work my way. So if you can figure it out, please let me know in the comments how you did it. So what I ended up doing, which is why I recommend adding the two and a half more inches, which I didn't do, so it was a little trickier, but I lined up the raw edge of my bias strip at a 3 8 inch seam allowance under the neckline. So you can see I kind of had it already ironed out before. That's what I'm lining the edge up against. So I'm gonna pin this down and then I'm gonna sew on the strip 3 8 inches into the bias facing from that raw edge. Then from here, I'm gonna fold the raw edge under. So I kind of have actually this really nice little neckline now. And I'm gonna press it in place. And then going back underneath, I'm gonna trim off all my excess seam allowance. And then you can serge or zigzag stitch this edge so it'll keep it from fraying. Then I'm gonna go back and do a 1 8 inch top stitch. Grab the front bodice and lay it right sides with the back of the bodice. So when I match up my shoulder seams, you wanna sew it right through that little corner so you have a smooth transition from the back to the front. So pin these together and the sides as well. 
and then sew all of these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open all the seams. Going to the sleeves, you're going to do another gathering base stitch between the small dots on both sleeves. Pull up the gathers a little bit. And then with right sides together, fold up the short ends and pin them in place. Sew these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then iron open the seams. Turn your sleeve right side out. Find the mark on your sleeve and match it to the armhole on the bodice. Tuck your sleeve inside. Start by matching up the top of the sleeve with the shoulder seam. And then the bottom seam of the sleeve with the bottom seam of the bodice. From there, line up the straight edges around the armhole. When you get to the gathered areas, pull up the gathers to line up with the armhole. Pin it in place and then move around the gathers to evenly distribute them. Do the same thing to the other side. Sew these on with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And then to clean these up and make sure they're nice and neat, do a serge or zigzag stitch around each edge. Turn your bodice right side out. At the bottom edge, fold it up 3 8 inches and iron it down. Then do the same thing at the bottom of the sleeves. Sew these at a generous 1 4th inch seam allowance. Make sure to leave about a 2 inch gap on all 3 sections for our elastic. Depending on your size, for mine I'm going to cut 1 30 and 3 4 inch piece of elastic and then 2 12 inch pieces. Add your safety pin to one end and then going to the open gap you're going to thread your elastic through all the way around doing the same thing on the sleeves with the 12 inch pieces. Overlap the ends about an inch and I'm going to sew across them about three or four times in two spots to make sure they're very secure. Pull the elastic so it's tucked into the channel. Fold over the fabric at the open gaps and pin it down. Then go back and sew these closed. Lastly, you want to do a slip stitch sewing the shoulder seams down to the neckline in the back so they stay hidden underneath. Also do a slip stitch at the two raw ends of the drawstrings. Pull on the drawstrings to gather up the front and then you can tie a bow to hold it in place. Finally! This blouse is done. It definitely gave me a run for my money 
and this pattern is not a beginner pattern at all because all there is is instructions without any pictures. So if you don't know how to do something, like I had no idea how to do the back neckline, it can be very frustrating and very confusing. But I am so happy in the end that I chose to go with this blouse because I'm absolutely in love with the style. It fits me perfectly. Even though it's a little more revealing than I'm used to, I actually really don't mind it. The apron is super easy and even adding all the decoration shouldn't make it that much harder. Contrasting fabrics definitely pull this whole thing together to give it a much more interesting and expensive look. If you keep in mind to use a three color palette, that will definitely help you out picking out your contrasting colors and fabrics. So feel free to let all those creative ideas flow with this one. But for now, this beast has taken a lot out of me and I am happy to say it's finally done. And I am definitely inclined to make more in the future because there are some other necklines that I really like. I really hope this was a helpful tutorial for you. I'll leave part one linked down below if you have not seen that yet. And I have more videos coming soon. Please subscribe if you have not already and hit the bell to get notified when I upload. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.